The Arizona Coyotes are currently homeless beyond this coming season. The city of Glendale made that a matter of fact when it announced the Coyotes lease at the city owned Gila River Arena won't be renewed past 2021-2022. If you know anything about the franchise, it's hardly shocking to see the Coyotes at a crossroads. Miserable results on the ice and instability off of it have come to define the Sun Belt franchise. Is this truly the beginning of the end for NHL hockey in the state of Arizona? Or is this simply another plot twist in what's become a 25 year long soap opera drama in the desert? We'll try to untangle this hot mess for you. So sit back, relax, and take this in. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to tell you guys to subscribe to our channel. We are on our way to 100,000 subscribers and we can't do that without your help. Okay, a quick history lesson off the hop. The Winnipeg Jets relocated to Phoenix for the 1996-1997 season. The original ownership group included NBA legend Jerry Colangelo, then the owner of the Phoenix Suns, as well as several local business people. It turned out the Suns Arena, now called Footprint Center, wasn't well suited for hockey with its low seating capacity and obscure your sight lines. Let's call that misstep number one. In 2003, under another ownership group, the Coyotes moved into a new rink in Glendale, the same one they're about to be evicted from. There's nothing wrong with Glendale per se, but it's not downtown or in a touristy area like Scottsdale. It was and still is a troublesome setup in a non-traditional hockey market. For a large chunk of residents, catching games at Gila River Arena takes too much time and effort. That's clearly misstep number two. From there, things went off the rails. First, in 2005, minority owner and hockey goat Wayne Gretzky named himself head coach despite having zero NHL coaching experience. The Coyotes posted sub-500 records in three of Gretzky's four seasons behind the bench to extend the club's playoff drought to six years. By then, the novelty of supporting the new team in town had faded, so the Coyotes were bleeding money too. Shortly after, majority owner Jerry Moyes filed the team for bankruptcy and the NHL offered awkwardly assumed control of the Coyotes from 2009 to 2013, and at one point swatted away an attempted purchase by former Tech CEO Jim Balsillie, who wanted to move the team to Hamilton, Ontario. But Commissioner Gary Bettman, whose legacy is strongly tied to the performance of certain markets in the southern US, had no interest in diverting from his grand plan. The franchise still ended up changing hands multiple times in the 2010s, amid rumors of possible relocation to Seattle, Quebec City, El Elsewhere. Unsurprisingly, attendance figures remained at or near the bottom of the league as the Coyotes continued to play out of Glendale while failing to generate much momentum with the on-ice product. The Coyotes have made the postseason only nine times in 24 seasons since leaving Winnipeg, advancing past the second round just once in the 2011-2012 season. Along with the Buffalo Sabres and Edmonton Oilers, they are in the conversation for the worst team of the salary cap era honors. Which brings us back to the present. If the NHL and the Coyotes' current ownership group, led by billionaire Alex Morello, intend on keeping the team in Arizona, which is what both parties have said over the past week, there's no straightforward solution. The city of Tempe, a Phoenix suburb that is believed to be more suitable for pro sports than Glendale, wants to develop a sports and entertainment district. The Coyotes are set to submit a proposal to Tempe in September to get in on the fun. That's fantastic, except construction will take years, which means the Coyotes will still need a temporary home. Footprint Center, where the Suns play, is also off the table, according to AZ Coyotes insider Craig Morgan, because Suns owner Robert Sarver is, in Morgan's words, not interested in partnering with the Coyotes. Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum, a rundown facility that holds only 13,000 people for hockey, could be a cute short-term fit, though it's a little on the amateur side for an NHL team. Nevertheless, one scenario could see the Coyotes move to Veterans Memorials for a few seasons and then transition into a brand new permanent home in Tempe. But might it actually be in the best interest of the Coyotes and the NHL to think outside the box? Could they use the club's impasse with the local market to test out a place like Houston, the fifth most populous city in North America? Houston has a lot going for it. Number one, Tillman Fertitta, the owner of the NBA's Rockets, has expressed interest in bringing the NHL to Houston as recently as 2017. Number two, the Rockets' home arena, the Toyota Center, is compatible with hockey. And number three, realignment wouldn't be necessary since the Coyotes are already in the Central Division with the Dallas Stars. 
And most importantly, Houston wouldn't screw with Batman's manifest destiny as he inches towards retirement. Instead of really making a splash by moving the Coyotes to Quebec City, another market with an NHL caliber arena and plenty of potential from a fan base perspective, the commissioner could keep his obsession with the Southern US alive. A less likely scenario is a full-time relocation to Houston or elsewhere, but that would give the NHL a fresh start and also allow it to say goodbye to Morello, who's been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons since purchasing the team in 2019. For starters, the Coyotes owe Glendale almost $1.5 million for arena payments, according to reporting by The Athletic. Several vendors and partners, including the team Airline, are waiting on outstanding payments and have also felt the team has tried to bully them. What's more, there are claims of the Coyotes not paying player bonuses on time and while the team was in the 2019-2020 bubble, not offering per DMs to players. Meanwhile, the club's workplace environment has been described as toxic. The Athletic reported a law firm has met with employees to discuss these issues and more, including at least one case of alleged sexual harassment. If I was being quite frank with you, I'd say it's a shit show, one employee told the website about working for the Coyotes under Morello. Oh, and let's not gloss over two recent draft-related debacles. The team forfeited a first-round pick and a second-round pick for violating the league's combine testing policy. They then selected defenseman Mitchell Miller in the fourth round of the 2020 NHL draft. Miller was on many other teams' do not draft list because he had previously been convicted of abusing and bullying a black, developmentally disabled classmate and reportedly appeared to show no remorse in the lead-up up to the draft. After first backing the decision, the team eventually caved to external pressure and renounced the pick. All of this dysfunction under Morello is, of course, underpinned by poor performance on the ice. The 2021-2022 Coyotes, again in a lengthy rebuild, are going to be flat out terrible. Look, there are some diehard fans in Arizona, some Coyote fans who have been through hell and back and are still kicking. But how many blows can one market realistically take? I suppose we're about to find out. And while it seems more likely than not the Coyotes stay put in Arizona, at least in the short to medium terms, the future doesn't look bright for the franchise on or off the ice. Put simply, there's more questions than answers right now when it comes to NHL hockey in the desert, 25 years on.